In this video, I'm mixing every chocolate bar and flavor into one bar. For context, the first chocolate bar ever created was in 1847 made by British chocolatier J.S. Fry and Sons. It was called Fry's Chocolate Cream, which was pretty basic, but still revolutionary. By the way, I didn't know chocolatier was even a word, but technically by its definition, I'm now one too. No big deal. Now fast forward to 2024, and we live in a world where all kinds of chocolate bars have been created. Milk chocolate, dark chocolate, with nuts, with fruits, with literally the hottest pepper in the entire world. Which I tried later on in this video, by the way. Help! 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 Now what really piqued my curiosity of making this video was seeing the top YouTuber on the platform, Mr. Beast, make his own chocolate bar. And listen to what he said about chocolate these days. Like a Hershey's bar just tastes like, yeah, it tastes very processed. So it's so fascinating to me, like, why are there not new, innovative, cool, like, snack products coming out more often? Well, Mr. Beast, don't worry. I'm about to make the most innovative chocolate bar in history. And at the end, I'm going to have three people taste test this chocolate bar along with myself to see if it really is the greatest chocolate bar ever created. Oh yeah, one of them will get a golden ticket too. For challenges like this, I like to start out at HEB because this Texas size store has just about everything. I know I looked crazy to some of the customers, but I was having fun with this, shelling out these chocolate bars into my cart like it was nobody's business. Bruh, potato chip? And things were going fantastic, but that's when I saw it. Successful trip in the candy aisle, I was on my way to finding more unique flavors. I'm getting a bunch of candy. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. If I was looking for like a pan to make a huge like chocolate bar, if I melted a bunch of chocolate, what do you think would be best to use? How big of a pan do you want? Well, I'm mixing all these together. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I'm kind of awkward with human interaction, but this guy was very helpful, so I got my pan, and it was time to leave the store. Why'd my arm look so long there? <laughs> and the most famous chocolate bars are actually in these checkout lanes, so I scooped all these up before checking out. Oh, I forgot one. Here we go. Jasmine, you're doing a great job bringing up all these candy bars. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. You too, Carter. Thanks, bro. Please subscribe to help me pay for this. I like chocolate. Now the next stores I will speed run because I know you guys want to get home and get mixing. But I want to highlight the strangest bars that I found and ensure y'all that I'm going through every hoop to find them all. Oh and last time I asked you guys if you eat these and there was a resounding yes. So thank you for interacting and that's good to know. So I got another question for you. What is your favorite chocolate bar and why? We got some new ones. Someone just saw me do that. I think I'm weird. But I am weird. What the heck? I already noticed this before because my phone's over here, but let me show you. Protein bars? Do I count this? My wallet hopes not. Yeah, this was a tough one and I'm curious to hear what y'all think, but I did choose the protein bars with chocolate on them because technically it's still a chocolate bar. It's a chocolate bar. Just these. Just these. Very nice. 5076. Please subscribe. I'm at over 120 bars now, but I was still looking for any more that I haven't found. Still looking for this one candy bar, whatchamacallit. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Whatchamacallit. Um, what is it? Uh, whatchamacallit. Oh. Whatchamacallit. 2764. This was getting expensive, and spending all this money, I could really use a payday. I hope that was funny for you watching. If not, understandable. Okay, this is the last store, and we're gonna go super quick. I found some really unique chocolate, like great value, just probably the most basic chocolate bar in history, but also some extravagant ones, even ones that were vegan and cost six dollars. Bruh. This took longer than expected, but with this many chocolate bars, I wanted to lay it out nice and organized, and I did it by spelling a word, which you can guess right now as I show it. I know, I know, not very original, but it does help me sort out the chocolate bars into groups and brands. And now, science time. 
So before I carelessly mix all these chocolate bars together, here's some data to make sure we're as close to evenly distributed as possible. This pan has a length and width of 33 by 23 centimeters. That gives it a surface area of 759 centimeters. Now I have 137 chocolate bars that I need to melt together using the double boiler method, which I'll explain later once we get there. But for now, you have to know I'm cutting three by two centimeter blocks from each chocolate because three times two equals six and six times 137 equals 822 centimeters, which is slightly over the surface area of the pan. That should give us just enough chocolate to result in a nice thick chocolate bar. I also got a scale to help take even chunks from each bar because remember we're trying to make the most innovative chocolate bar ever created that could possibly even impress Mr. Beast. We just hit 100 million! Let's get mixing. Starting out with the letter H. And because I have so many bars, I'll go quickly through this but I'll slow down at the more interesting flavors to show you guys what I think until we have all bars ready to be melted. Dude, not gonna lie, that's a crispy chocolate bar right there. Well, that's that's satisfying. 0.35, it's slightly heavier, I think, because of the almond on top. Now we're getting into the luxurious chocolate line. This is for people with a lot of class. Let's try a piece. That's really good. Apparently there's a difference between the left and right one. Let's taste test to see if there's a difference. There's absolutely no difference. Twix cookie dough. This looks unique. I'll give this one a tiny try. It's kind of a lot going on. Ooh! Twix ghosts. What does that even mean? I don't know what that even means. What am I doing? Oh, that's not cool, dude. This is breaking brand right here. We're off to a great start. On to the letter A. Dove is pretty basic, but smooth in its taste. Dude, this video's taking so long, I haven't got my workout in yet today. I'm just kind of angry, man. Ow. Darn. Grace, be quiet! I should probably eat a Snickers. I'm not me when I'm hungry. Snickers peanut butter brownie. I mean, let's just put all different types of flavors in there, right? Oh, there's some brownie in there. Just too much going on. Next up is Lily's birthday cake white chocolate style. Ooh, golden. It was actually clutch that Lily's had this golden packaging because I was able to reuse this as my golden ticket that one of the taste testers would get later on. And the prize of the golden ticket, let's just say it's similar to the movie. Satisfying, I, got, I like the confetti in there too. Extremely dark chocolate. That's extreme. After putting five more flavors of the Lily brand in, we were on to the end of hang time. Butterfinger. Godiva. It's completely wrapped in plastic and I don't see like a... There's three layers of wrapping. I opened it like a maniac before, so I didn't notice that it does have this flap. It gives you a nice little visual of what's inside the chocolate bar. That's kind of cool. And then you take a stick like gum. My apologies. It's kind of cool. We got Snap Bar XL, which fun fact, I never knew this existed. It looks a little crumbly and crusty. Dude, this smells so good. Snap Bar might be onto something. Mmm, that's good. Point three six, good enough for me. Right now, we're gonna check out Zero, the candy bar that I've never tried in my life, and I don't know who has. What in tarnation? It's white? It's almost like the white version of a Snickers. It's good douche. I just missed the bowl. It's good douche. I get it, Ellie. That's kind of weird. I don't like that. It's actually pretty cool, and I guess if you like raspberry. Ow. Ow. Pretty plain. By far the most expensive chocolate bars we got here. I think this was like $6 a bar. Get back to human. 
Say what? It's time to get back to the way humans ate before industry ruined food. Ingredients, organic cacao, organic unrefined coconut sugar, organic cashew butter, organic cacao butter, organic vanilla bean sea salt. It's safe to say this company probably doesn't eat pizza rolls. Ooh, this is what my ancestor ate. You see it? You see the squares? I feel like I can use this as a facial cleanser or something. It's so organic. All right, what am I doing? Some of the powder got my lungs. It does have a nice real taste, rich in its flavoring. It's pretty good. Way to switch it up, whatchamacallit. If you like Butterfingers, you'll like whatchamacallit. Kit Kat. Kit Kat birthday cake. It looks aesthetically pleasing, I must say. Oh. Comment down below if this annoys you. Isn't that unsettling? Cutting things like this, I feel like such a chef. This is Central Market Blueberry Acai. Mm -mm. I had to reread this one. The brand is called Endangered Species. Espresso beans, ooh. Maybe I can have an energy kick after this one. Woo! All that caffeine got me stimulated though. You know what I mean? What the? After screaming my head off and running around the house, my wife was wondering what was going on and it was on to the letter T. Definitely a bar. I wonder how hard that is for manufacturing companies like for Reese's to change their manufacturing style. Reese's outrageous. 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 Let's see what's so outrageous about this. Whoa, whoa. You wanna talk about outrageous? How about packaging that sticks to the candy bar? Still attached. I mean, dude, I could have ate that. Coming out the gate with a new one, orange. Wow. Tastes like orange chicken. On to the letter I, and let's speed things up a bit so we can get melted. Blood orange. Ferro Rocha, you probably know as the little golden puffball thingies that look really expensive and also like, you know, the classic gift to your girlfriend in the bag. Golden puffball inscription. Pretty cool actually that they did that. The big dog in the space of chocolate, Hershey's. So here's one that confused me. Zero sugar. Zero, it smells like plastic. The first ingredient is maltitol. This concept of fake sugar has always confused me because I feel like intuitively it's worse for you, but please comment your thoughts on the matter. I'm curious to hear some responses. I really don't think this is better for you than just regular chocolate, quite frankly. The last two letters contain some of the strangest flavors, but I'll try to go quickly through it to get into the melting and mixing. A cornflake chocolate bar, ooh. It reminds me of that Rubik's Cube type feel. Wow. I never heard of this brand before doing this, but the Ritter Sport chocolate bars, I gotta say, they were actually really good. Their flavors like the cornflake and graham cracker really provided a nice texture to each of the bars and the chocolate tasted very real. Dark chocolate with marzipan filling. Wait, hold up. What is marzipan? Marzipan is ready to eat sweet treat traditionally found in confectionery shops across Europe. Made from ground almond sugar and egg whites. Yeah, I didn't really like the marzipan. It kind of had a weird sour taste. After putting in a protein bar in a random Texas brand, I had the Central Market chocolate bars, which were actually really good. The potato chip one was one of the best ones I've tried, but the next two, not so much. I like spicy things, but not really in my chocolate bar. Yeah, this Hatch Chili chocolate bar was spicy, and I thought it was really gross, but let me tell you, it did not hold a candle to the literal hottest chocolate bar in the entire world, which also messed me up for days. Lint. Oh, starting out with chili. I don't like spicy chocolate. Yeah, I didn't like the Lint brand spicy chocolate either, but once again, it was literally nothing to the world's hottest chocolate bar that I probably should not have consumed. The last letter. My bag's over there. Ah, the last letter, home to the Mr. Beast bar and many strange flavors before we finally melt them all together. Niagara chocolates. 
Kinder Bueno. Uh-oh, what do we got here? More protein bars, yes sir! This was genius for marketing because technically now the hang time chocolate bar would also be a protein bar. Granted, the amount would be very small. Okay, I know that was a little much. I just thought it looked cool from that bird's eye view. Vegan chocolate. That's pretty good. Oh, here we got a premium baking chocolate bar, which is pretty fitting because we're about to bake all this. It's really cool. It has the ounce on there. It says one fourth of an ounce. Mr. Beast chocolate bars. Only four ingredients. Cane sugar, organic chocolate liquor, organic cocoa butter, and sunflower lechon. The original is very bitter. I think that's intentional though. You know, it's just the cocoa flavor. In my opinion, the Mr. Beast bars were just okay tasting. I mean, there are only four ingredients, so I don't know what else you could expect. All I know is I was ready to mix all my chocolate together, and in the hang time bar, there are definitely more than four ingredients, okay? There might be 400 ingredients, and I really hope it's innovative. But first, before I melt all the chocolate together and have people taste test it, I decided to try the hottest chocolate bar in the world myself before adding it into my batter. Honestly, I thought this would be funny and not too bad, but turns out it was much worse than I thought. And this is for educational purposes only, I strongly recommend never to try this in your life as it literally could cause serious damage. Warning, these bars are violently hot. They're made with authentic Carolina Reaper peppers. The Carolina Reaper pepper holds the Guinness World Record for the hottest pepper with a Scoville rating of 1,569,000 Scoville heat units. To give you a comparison, a grocery store jalapeno is roughly 1,500 Scoville oh, units. Oh no, oh there's no, there's no design to it, it's just, should I do it or not? No. No, not a big one! Michael, don't, that's dumb. It's not that bad. <laughs> Your tongue is like. <sighs> Wait, it's getting progressively hotter. Hold on. Help, 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 help. Yeah, I'll never do that again, and for the safety of my contestants, we're not putting in the world's hottest chocolate bar. Let's get back to melting. First, I'm blending up some of the pieces to make them a little smaller. Next, I poured it back into the bowl to get ready to melt it. The pot is steaming, so now, the double boil method, you do that, and you gotta be very patient. You don't wanna burn the chocolate. So let's turn the heat down to medium. Patience was key because the last thing I wanted to do was burn the chocolate and mess it up after all the hard work of combining every bar into this bowl. And by allowing the steam from the boiling water to heat the glass bowl, the chocolate can progressively melt at an even pace, which helps for a smooth melting process. I was kind of worried though about the hard ingredients like the nuts and pretzels, etc., because those obviously didn't melt like the chocolate. However, they were just rearranged and settled very well in the final hang time chocolate bar. I was a little worried at first, but this is is turning out great. After 10 more minutes of stirring, I was ready to pour it in the pan to see if we made the perfect amount. Look at that. Ow, it's hot. Satisfying. I feel like Willy Wonka right now. Wow. Spread that bad boy out. Oh, oh, that's, that's perfect. perfect. It was indeed the perfect size for our pan, meaning the prior calculations paid off. So I put tin foil over the pan and I left it overnight in the fridge in hopes that it would harden up and be the best chocolate bar ever created. The next day. Yes, I'm wearing the same clothes. That's one of the perks of the job. But let's see how the chocolate has turned out. First time I'm looking at it. I'm excited. Look at that, dude. This actually looks amazing, and I'm so curious to see how it tastes, and as you can see, all the different ingredients are mixed around, so perhaps some bites taste different than others. <laughs> I had to be extra careful with this beautiful slab of chocolate, and my plan was to cut it up into three extra large hang time chocolate bars, with one of them receiving the golden ticket. I also cut up squares that were deep enough to break off into pieces. It's time to wrap this bad boy up and make it look official, and the first one will get the golden ticket while the other two have nothing in it. Hey, a 1 out of 3 odds, or a 33%, was still much better odds than in the movie. And I actually worked pretty hard on these wrappers, so please let me know what you guys think of them in the comments. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, time to put it to the test. 
You guys aren't allergic to nuts, right? Nope. Nope. You sure? You're positive. <laughs> I'm positive. <laughs> There's a lot of ingredients in these, and I want honest opinions and feedback into uh, what it tastes like. And one does have a golden ticket. Ooh. One of you guys are gonna get it. Ladies first. She gets okay. to pick one. Hmm. Shorts first. I'll take this one. All right. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna love this. A flavor explosion. In 0.02 grams of protein. Oh yeah. At this point, I was super excited, but also a little nervous because I didn't know if all these ingredients mixed together had some sort of chemical reaction in your stomach, but I was really hoping it tasted great and they liked it. These are very well packaged. Thank you, thank you. Did you get the golden ticket? Uh, it doesn't look good. Oh, you did no, I did didn't. you? No. Whoa. Oh, oh, I got it. it. Golden yeah. ticket. Congratulations, you have found the golden ticket. Redeem for tour of the Hangtime Factory or $5. Okay, <laughs> let's go. Uh, which one are you gonna choose? Where's the, what's the Hangtime Factory? That's my house. Okay, <laughs> Hangtime Factory. Sure. Are you serious? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I hope Grant's not expecting the Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory, but I'm glad he won. And now for the moment of truth to see if this bar is scrum diddly umptious or not. Whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Mm. Mm. Honest reviews now. Mmm. You got a lot of mint lot, in this lot one. going on. Bro, My this first. is really good. Ooh. It's very creamy. It gets better. I feel like all our bites taste different. They do. <laughs> I'm not a fan of mint, but the mint is so subtle, it's like perfect. Yeah, it's like almost subtle. Like a, almost like it's fresh. Because at first you didn't even like, oh, I don't want this. There's a lot going on. It's a little overwhelming. I love it. Where can I buy these? Thanks, Grant. You can buy more on your visit to the Hangtime Factory. And thank you for watching this video. If you're staying on YouTube, please check out another one. Till next time, Lord willing, grace, love, peace, and mercy.